everyone, I'm Kelly. And I'm Olivia, and we're from the Smithsonian Marine Station in Fort Pierce, Florida. We're from the Coral Health and Marine Probiotics Lab, also known as the CHAMP Lab, and we're here for our third video of our science series. If you haven't done so yet, please take a look at our previous videos that address the importance of coral reefs, coral anatomy, and some factors that are putting corals at risk. But today, we have the pleasure of introducing two CHAMP Lab interns, Liz and Monica. Hi guys! Hey! Hi. Hi, I'm Liz and I'm a microbiology intern. And I'm Monica, I'm a chemical ecology intern. And we're here to talk to you about stony coral tissue loss disease. Here at the CHAMP Lab, we study this disease and look for ways to prevent it from spreading across coral reefs. Let's dive in. So what is stony coral tissue loss disease? Well, it's a disease that damages stony corals or the ones with the hard skeletons that build up the big reef structures. It's a tissue loss disease because stony coral tissue loss disease causes the soft coral polyp or tissue to die and peel away from the hard skeleton below. When the coral polyp dies, it exposes their skeleton to the environment, which will begin to break down over time. This causes reefs to lose enormous amounts of habitat for countless other organisms on the reef. It's a bit like large trees in a forest being cut down. The habitat that remains is much lower quality. Many coral scientists consider this disease to be the worst disease outbreak ever recorded. It's so devastating for multiple reasons. First, this disease has lasted an unusually long time. Most disease outbreaks in the Caribbean last about one to three years. However, stony coral tissue loss disease has lasted for six years and is still going. This has allowed the disease to spread and infect thousands of coral colonies. Although the disease front has passed through most of the Florida reef tract, new infections are still occurring. Second, unlike other diseases that typically infect only a handful of species, this disease has infected more than 20 species of stony corals, many types of star and brain corals, as well as the federally threatened pillar corals. And third, stony coral tissue loss disease is extremely deadly. Although some species are more vulnerable than others, all species that have developed stony coral tissue loss disease have suffered great declines in population size. Some species are nearly wiped out along the Florida reef track like the pillar coral that has a mortality rate of nearly 100%. Like many coral diseases, the exact cause of stony coral tissue loss disease is currently unknown, but research by the CHAMP lab and our partners point to a bacterial infection as being the cause. To see if bacteria were involved in the disease, they treated diseased corals with a kind of antibiotic that kills many different kinds of bacteria. It turned out to make a difference in how the disease spread on the coral colony. The antibiotic did slow down the progression of the disease, which suggested that the pathogenic or harmful bacteria are involved in the spread of stony coral tissue loss disease. We are currently working on the specific identities of bacteria found on diseased corals and whether or not they play a role in infection, because not all bacteria found on corals are harmful. There are millions upon millions of bacteria present on the diseased coral and the surrounding seawater which makes finding out which ones are the bad ones quite challenging. As we mentioned earlier, the outbreak of stony coral tissue loss disease started six years ago in 2014 near Miami-Dade County in South Florida. Since then, it's traveled both north to Martin County as well as further south along the Florida reef track. As of the beginning of 2020, the disease front has passed Key West and was almost to the dry tortugas. The rapid spread is deeply concerning to scientists but until recently, we weren't certain about how the disease was spreading. Our work at the CHAMP Lab, in collaboration with Dr. Greta Abbey, a coral disease ecologist, has shown that this disease is waterborne, meaning that this disease can be transmitted from one coral to the next just by traveling through the water column. This makes stopping the spread of disease very difficult, as corals do not need to be in direct contact with one another. However, the disease can spread through direct contact with other diseased corals and anything that's been in the water column where the disease is present. So, if you are a diver, make sure to sanitize your equipment after each dive.
And yes, wash your hands. Unfortunately, in more recent years, stony coral tissue loss disease has made its way to eight other countries throughout the Caribbean, reaching as far east as St. Thomas and the U.S. Virgin Islands, and as far south as Belize. Now more than ever, there is a critical need to find an effective treatment for this disease, with the hope that we can stop its spread before it devastates these Caribbean reefs. You can see that this disease is a big problem in getting larger. Many of our partners are working on disease management, developing treatments, and protecting healthy coral colonies. Treatments some of our partners are currently testing include removing diseased colonies from the reef so that they will be less likely to infect other individuals surrounding them, drilling a trench in the coral along the lesion, similar to a firebreak, and filling it with chlorinated epoxy so that it will kill the pathogen before it spreads across the coral, and finally, using a paste filled with antibiotics and spreading it over top the lesion. So far, the antibiotic paste has worked better than the other treatment methods. At the Smithsonian Marine Station, the CHAMP lab has been hard at work investigating the use of probiotics as a treatment, or the use of microorganisms with beneficial protective properties. Probiotics are pretty common. If you've ever eaten yogurt or sauerkraut or had a sip of kombucha, then you've had probiotics. These foods contain bacterial strains that are beneficial to humans and can improve our health. We are testing out probiotics found on healthy corals along the Florida reef track. These are corals that seem to be unaffected or more resistant to the effects of stony coral tissue loss disease. The idea is that the probiotic bacteria would be able to outcompete the pathogen or kill the pathogen via antibiotic production. This would not only slow the spread of disease, but also help those species that are at risk for this disease. We've already found one promising probiotic that seems to work well in the lab, and we've even begun testing them on wild corals in the Florida reef tract. But this is just one of hundreds of possible probiotics we've already isolated, and that we'll be looking more closely at in the future. Stay tuned for our next video, and we'll talk in more detail about these exciting and unique probiotics, what they are, how they work, and how we've been working in the lab to find as many of these probiotics as we can. Well, thank you guys for walking us through the important information on the stony coral tissue loss disease. Of course, it's so sad to see these corals threatened by such a devastating disease. But the CHAMP lab is doing our best to understand the characteristics of this disease so we can look for ways to best prevent its spread. And thank you guys to everyone watching our third video on the stony coral tissue loss disease. For our fourth video, we'll be introducing some other CHAMP lab members to discuss a treatment that the CHAMP lab has come up with to try to combat this disease. And in the meantime, if you guys have any questions, please click on the link below or follow us on Twitter. Talk to you soon! Bye! Bye. Bye.